feeling? I'm good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like moderately anxious. I know, I know. When was the last time that you cried from joy? I don't have an answer for it. It doesn't like, there's an, I don't remember it. When if it was happened. the last time you felt like an immense sense of joy? I think when I got signed to like the gallery thing, it was like a relief and like a joy. And it was definitely like hindered a little bit by being afraid of not being able to like follow through and not being able to pull it together. Um, but that would be, there was joy there for sure. Were you ever bullied growing up? <laughs> Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, when I was little, even by my best friend, you know, I think like I was the, the quieter one. I was the more likely to get pushed over or like more easily swayed into doing the other activity that the other people wanted to do. Not outright, but because I was so shy, I had some teachers that struggled with me because I didn't want to participate because it made me uncomfortable but like I had one teacher that was like really not okay with it she had like three sons and they were all like tough hockey players and she'd never had to really properly deal with <laughs> someone like me that was just like and I was stubborn about it too which was kind of this like dichotomy of being like absolutely terrified to participate or sing in class or like have any have everyone look at me all at once like baseball was like impossible for me to play but I don't know I kind of lost my train of thought there because it, it like I, I go back in that space and then my throat closes up like it makes me upset and I was definitely bullied by like my my friends when I was little but not all the time you know otherwise they would be your friends but I don't know I think that's kind of how it goes a little bit <laughs> I feel like we all have that um, what did your friends bully you about? Oh, it was like, I remember, and this is, I remember being in grade five and my like best friend Jade, <laughs> sorry Jade, uh, <laughs> she, she like said like, I was like stupid and uh, I got struck by lightning and like fell off a lifeguard tower or something like totally stupid like that. like little weird nine, ten-year-old bullying, like name-calling. And that kind of stuff makes me shut down. Like, I don't retaliate. I'm not someone who can just be like, oh yeah, well, <laughs> you know, some like equally terrible comeback. I just like freeze in those situations and just take it all in and it sits in there. And I didn't, because I was so shy, I was even shy with my parents, so I didn't ever talk about it with anyone and it just kind of like, sat in my body forever until I eventually like released it like probably 30 years later but like do you know what I mean <laughs> it's a long time to to sit on those things there's this like the oldest thing in my whole like thing that I remember being affecting me the most was this really it would be very insignificant moment in the other guy in this man's life but I was eight and I was going to the movies, or I was at the movie theater with my cousin and my mom, and my mom stayed behind to get popcorn, and me and my cousin Jen went into the theater, and it's like dark, and I have like naturally like, kind of like a little hollow around my eyes, like, and dark circles because of it, and this man was like, oh, we got quite the shiner there, um, like playing baseball kind of thing, and I was like, huh? And I looked at him, and he's like, oh, both eyes, like, must have really got struck and he like, in my head, I'm frozen. And I had this moment where I was like, oh my God, am I ugly? <laughs> and yeah, I remember seeing his wife or like partner, whoever, tug on his sleeve and was like, kind of like gourd, like shut up. And, and then they carried on and I just sat there and just like really internalized that and it stuck with me for so long and I didn't even necessarily remember the root of it for a long time like but I did was like I was like oh I must be ugly <laughs> and then being who I was like I said I didn't talk about my struggles or my feelings or my day-to-day -day happenings with 
um, with a parent or anyone because I didn't feel comfy doing it. So that again, like sat forever. And it's just like such a, like a, that guy doesn't remember it. <laughs> but like 30 years later, I think of it every once in a while, like, ugh, like what a yucky feeling. Tell me about your first heartbreak. I was 18 or 19. And it was like my first boyfriend that I really, like I had another one before that, but it was mostly because I was getting, actually I got teased by my girlfriends for not having a boyfriend yet. They're like, what are you? A lesbian? Like, I'm like, what? No, just everybody sucks. Um, and uh, <laughs> I'm not the problem. Yeah, my first real proper boyfriend that I really loved. Um, and we were super close. We were besties. We did everything together. And he broke up with me out of nowhere. The worst part about it <laughs> was that I was like having fun at a party with my friends. And then he showed up and was like, hey, can we talk? And like drove me to like our special spot. We used to like do crossword puzzles by the water tower. Drove me to the water tower, broke up with me in his parents' van, and then was like, okay, now I'll drive you home. And I was like, what? No, I don't want to be in this space. But he did, he drove me home. And I cried forever. Um, and we had two pet cats at the time, and I just remember Sophie and Simon like come and like like they could like feel how deeply upset I was, um, and they would come and snuggle me. But yeah, it was it was like so gut wrenching. And then I remember we would like months later he was like, I made a giant mistake, and I was like, Yeah, you did. And I would always and I took him back, and I did that like six more times. <laughs> Because I was like, we're great. This is like, other than your like freaky little fall apart moments. Um, and it's really funny because this year, when I was trying to sort out like all the pieces that make me afraid of like being fully open in a relationship, I thought of that. Like, you know, there's other stuff with like my like biological dad and my ex stepdad, but then there's also just like that first big heartbreak where like even someone that chose you rejects you. So I called him because he's done a lot of therapy too and like uh, I knew he'd be open to it. So I called him up and just, we got to chat about it. I was like, I really wanna, he's like, oh, I thought it didn't affect you. He's like, you were so like cool like afterwards and just, you know, did your life and did your things. And I was like, well, I did do my life and do my things. And I was like, for the most part, cool about it, but there's a huge chunk of it that it was not okay. And it really affected how I moved forward and how I trusted people like after that. Yeah, and so he kind of explained like where he was at like, I mean, we were 19 um, and how he was like, every time we were together, I was like, oh, tomorrow she's gonna break up with me. Like he just had this anxiety, I guess, the whole time, which is funny because him choosing that anxiety over the like comfy relationship we were in ended up giving me the anxiety in future comfy relationships. I mean, I, it was already probably there with other stuff too, but it definitely like topped it up a little bit. Finish this sentence. I miss... I miss my girlfriends in Winnipeg. Cause it takes me a while to get like really properly comfy with people. I'm gonna be like tearing up thinking about them. <laughs> Having like someone that can like watch a movie and you can like snuggle up to them. Yeah, I miss that. Cause there's like not a, a lot of people that I have that I feel comfy um, doing that with. And so I miss that. Because it takes like a decade for me to get there. <laughs>
putting pieces of like myself out there to be for the world um, and in my head it's putting pieces of myself out there to be judged which is not what is happening and I recognize that um, but the fear is definitely of like yeah not being received or being welcomed or wanted kind of thing is where all, all that comes from yeah at least I know the root of it <laughs> so I can work on it and I'm working on it currently and and making things but I definitely find myself moving slower or delaying or procrastinating or overthinking it's almost like a fear even like it, it like is tied to this like some people call it like a fear of success but it comes all back to that like fear of being seen even like I had when I was a kid like not wanting to participate in the sing-along things in school or the things where everyone's looking at you all at once yeah that fear of attention if you could change anything about the way you were raised what would it be it would be that conversation and feelings and all of the things that go with those your internal thoughts uh, would be shared like I just it wasn't a thing and I know why it wasn't a thing and that's you know everyone's doing their best um, but it definitely for someone as like I was just a really sensitive kid and to not have like the feeling of having an emotional support to confide in or talk to or just like share my like inner world with um, it was hard. What is something you feel shame around? I mean, I feel like there's a few things that I feel shame around and the kind of the one that kind of sifts up to the top of the surface isn't even one thing. It's all of these um, things I promised I would do or meant to do and they're like tiny things um, throughout the course of my life. And my, my ADHD is, leads me to struggle with like follow through um, or like having the motivation to like just start the project and I just like there's been things that I was gonna do for people like oh I'll make you this thing or I'll even little things like I'll drop off these cookies for you or <laughs> it's all these tiny little things that I never got to and it's like I remember all of them and individually they're like not very weighty and the person is like hopefully forgotten because it's been 25 years um, but collectively, all of those like little like unfulfilled promises or intentions, I remember all of them and I'll remember them at like really weird points, like middle of the night or like in the shower or just like, you know, you just get hit with this like little shame nugget against the side of your head. Um, yeah, and collectively it's very weighty. Like I almost wish I could just write them all down and call each person and be like, hey, remember like 14 years ago when I said I would do this and then I didn't? <laughs> I'm sorry. I hope you can forgive me. And like, I hope that's not what it takes to like let go of all of those things, but if it is, I'll do it. It's, it's not that much, I guess that's a lot of work, but it's not, it wouldn't be, everyone would be lovely, um, I'm sure. But yeah, that's a thing I feel shame around. It's the first thing that pops into my head. What is your greatest fear? I think emotional fear is being alone when I'm old. <laughs> I don't want to be alone. I don't really want to be alone like ever really, but like a, like a frail, a more frail version of me in the future. Like I want to protect her. <laughs> I don't want her to be alone, and that's a, that's like a fear. That's an emotional fear that I have. Um, and I think like 
I actually, I know there's uh, like reading about ADHD, there's this um, quote that Gabor, ha Gabor Mate has in his book uh, that someone said to him about feeling, there's this element of feeling alone, um, like you're on an island by yourself since the beginning of time. And you've, even though you're surrounded by other people, you still feel like alone on this island. And I think I've had that a lot of my life. Like, yes, I was an only child, but also just like emotionally not having that kind of open dialogue and support with like caregivers and people around me. Um, whether it was like my own fears or like their fears and whatever it is, I have felt that. Like I read that and it made me cry. And it was, I didn't even just read it, like read the book and came to it. I bought the book, I randomly opened it to one page, read that paragraph. Like, like it chose me more and it just resonated so deeply. And I was like, I do feel alone all the time. <laughs> Um, luckily I'd already started therapy by the, time, by the time I read that. So that's been a whole thing of like reconnecting to yourself so that you're not alone. Just like reconnecting the parts of you that you've been dissociated from or disconnected from. And when you reconnect those parts, you're no, you no longer feel like you're alone on the island. So that's where I am now, but I still worry about like future old lady April and I know she'll be fine but that I still have the fear of being alone and like having not set her up for success or something <laughs> yeah. if you could tell your younger self any one thing what would it be don't be afraid to ask questions and don't be afraid to do what's best for you and set boundaries. That's the <laughs> end. That's the most important part. I know there's lots of other things, but that's, that's number one by a mile. <laughs>